You may begin. Hi guys, thanks for coming. My name is Bryn Nelson, and for my topic, I research to what extent are dreams a necessary biological function. Now, at the beginning of this process, I had a really difficult time deciding what I wanted to research and devote the next six months of my life to looking at. Um, but one night I woke up, or I, in the middle of the night I woke up, and I recorded a dream on the notes app in my phone while still half asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I woke up the next morning and I read it. <laughs> and I was just thoroughly confused. It was extremely bizarre. and. This is what I woke up to. And random incoherencies aside, um, it's about me on a frozen lake. Um, oops. And then the next second, I'm in an old time town, and then I'm ziplining through Durango. But <laughs> I wanted to know why I could have possibly done <laughs> something like this. Um, and so I decided to look at that exact question is why. Um, so I quickly decided that researching dreams was a bad idea because researching dreams also meant researching brains. And <laughs> reading 20-page scientific papers about brain scans is dense in every sense of the word. <laughs> um, but I sat down and I pushed through, and that was definitely the hardest part of the process, is just forcing myself to do that. Um, but I did it, and I learned about you know, the theories that are out there about why we dream. and. Uh, what happens in our brain while we're doing that and why and that's what exactly what I'll be talking to you about today So dreams are neurons firing in the brain um, Yeah, it's pretty simple uh, <laughs> um, And they provoke images <laughs> and That happens in a phase of the sleep cycle called rapid eye movement or REM which happens every 90 or so minutes It goes in cycles and so neuroimaging has helped prove exactly what happens in REM while we're dreaming. And EEGs of the sleeping brain show that after we fall asleep, um, our brain function slows way down until REM initiates, when brain function heightens again and dreaming occurs. So this is an EEG of a sleeping brain, and that red box there is when REM heightens, and you can see sort of the spike brain function. And so the high activity is shown in the limbic system, specifically the amygdala, um, the frontal and parietal lobes, the cerebral cortex, and yeah, I guess that's it. Um, this is a normal EEG of a sleeping brain. Um, EEG stands for electroencephalography, and it does this research is, looks at brain function um, by looking at uh, the slight electrical pulses that neurons activate when they fire. So with this um, activity, a small area at the base of the brain called the pons. Um, signals the thalamus, um, which is responsible for relaying sensory information and perception. Um, and the pons also signals the spinal cord, um, which initiates a temporal paralysis, a temporary paralysis, um, which can protects the sleeper from moving around in their dream, experiencing their dreams physically. Um, when the spinal cord doesn't get this is when problems with things like sleepwalking occur. Um, so then the thalamus signals the cerebral cortex, um, which is the outermost gray matter portion of the brain, where thinking, learning, and information organization occur. And although our bodies are paralyzed, our brains are certainly not. Psychoanalysts and psychologists and scientists have looked into dreaming and what it does for us and have used this ability to look at more closely at the human brain and determine why we dream. And like I said, there's four major theories that they've determined. So the first theory, um, the threat simulation theory, or TST, suggests that dreams rehearse primitive mechanisms. Um, so essentially, the idea is that the function of dreaming is to mentally rehearse threat perception and avoidance in a safe, simulated environment like our subconscious. Um, so the theory was first derived from nightmares um, as an evolutionary trait, and it was proposed before things like EEGs and brain scan could really prove it. But with that technology, um, we've helped show that the amygdala here, which it controls the automatic flight or, spite res fight or flight response and hormones, is activated in REM. So that gives a little bit of information there. Um, and so yeah, it was developed as an evolutionary trait when human race faces way more threatening events like that. Um, and we, just as we evolved to stay on our two feet, we evolved to rehearse those threatening events um, in a way that we could learn what to do to escape them alive. Um, so it's proposed that dreams are really metaphorical in this sense. Um, we don't actually, 
you know, face threatening events, but we face threatening ideas, I guess. Um, that idea comes from Carl Jung, who was one of their very first scientists to look at dreams. Um, and he was a student of Sigmund Freud, and his work was done also before the technology came to prove it. But uh, he decided that um, we dreamt in metaphors because that was the best way for our subconscious to communicate with us personally and directly. And the TST uses this idea um, that the brain compiles multiple experiences that we've had in the past and we wake up and remember it as very incohesive. Um, while dreaming, we take in little bits of memory from all these past experiences that we have that we see as threatening so that we can use them while we're dreaming to come out of them in a better situation next time. And this is shown in the activation of the limbic system, um, which is responsible for retaining memory and controlling the fear hormones. So the theory is not for positive dreams like mine, but an example more relatable than, say, fighting off you know, threatening predators in the wild was, um, say, escaping a mugger on the street. Um, we have that dream, and then we wake up and better know how to handle it in the future. So the second theory um, is that dreams process emotional states of mind that are not consciously available to us yet. So essentially, dreams, like um, they take the conscious le consciousness levels, unconsciousness, and consciousness, um, and they let us sort of shed light on the suppressed emotions that we've experienced, and they do that in dreaming. So it calls on past emotions, which are stored in the limbic system, to express the more tangible to the more tangible self um, what we, ex we need to experience again, and it lets us experience them in our dreams which is shown in the amygdala, which is again a smaller part of the limbic system used for experiencing emotions. Uh, so new emotions about past experiences is what this gives us, and it does this on, by using linking both levels of consciousness. And psychoanalysts are the ones that tend to agree with this. This is definitely the least biological theory, um, but in general it defines my dream as my subconscious using the stress and confusion I felt in that situation while I was sleeping to emulate the real emotions that I needed to feel while I was awake. Um, so similar to the TST suggesting that dreams rehearse situations, <coughs> this theory deals with the emotion that we either won't or can't deal with while we are awake and deals with it while we are asleep. Which brings us to the next theory, the random activation theory, that proposes that dreams serve no purpose, um, but rather are a simple byproduct of our neurons firing while we're asleep, similarly to those that fire while we're awake. Um, so because of um, rapid eye movement, REM sleep, um, and the brain activity that happens with that. Um, it's shown that um, images from dreams are yeah, just a byproduct of us firing there, and they're actor effects of our brain trying to create cohesive experiences. And to form that experience, our brain draws on past emotions that we've had and past experiences, which is shown in the activation of, again, the limbic system, um, which controls long-term memory. And this is why uh, long, or the recurring dreams we have are awesome childhood memories, which is when the limbic system was evolving and developing, and it was more susceptible to retaining those experiences vividly. So basically, why we dream um, are random neur neuron firing near our limbic system and evoking these dreams, and our brain is trying to make a cohesive experience out of them. Um, as a result, we get these odd images. So the last theory is the organizational model of dreaming which was first proposed by psychoanalyst James Fossage, when he suggests that the core process of dreaming is to organize information. And this is very similar to the RIT um, that suggests that remembering grits of the info in our brain was processing the sensory intake from the day, and we're able to remember or to do these things because while we're asleep, we're focusing on only the sensory intake that we've already experienced. So we take in vast amounts of information every day, from the color um, of everything we experience to the differences in voice pitches. Um, and EEGs and sleep studies have helped prove that REM creates heightened brain activity rather than the other way around, rather than heightened brain activity creating REM. And so the theory is that while dreaming, our brain is able to sort through this information <coughs> and determine the importance of it and take the color of everything we've seen and the pitch of all the emotions we've had and turn them into cohesive in memories, either important ones that we don't remember or important ones that we do. And they store them in the long-term memory and it lets us move those into the frontal and parietal lobes, which are also activated during REM, um, responsible for sensory input <coughs> and processing by turning our brain on and letting us focus on that task. So shown in the REM brain function, um, these two are very heightened as well as the limbic system, which so we see 
see the connection between those two. And scientists have helped fill in these gaps with EEGs, which show activation in these brain parts. And they've let us connect our memories to these new experiences and make these experiences cohesive while we're sleeping. This model offers a distinction between REM and typical dreaming. So internal activity during REM is what we see as dreaming. So the, the brain process is what this function, this theory defines as dreaming. Whereas the after images that we remember that most of us would consider dreaming are just um, a result of that. And so it's bits of what our brain was sorting through. So this theory defines my dream as a still random, but a byproduct of the benefits that REM was giving me. So since the brain retains all of that information from the day, my brain was sorting through it all that night. And the frontal and parietal lobes that act together to associate past memories with present experiences kicked in. And although these experiences that created this dream for me weren't vital enough to remember consciously very accessibly, the amount of time that that experience was looked at by my sleeping and sorting brain was enough to kickstart that dream. And so while I was sorting through those memories, um, a compilation of my daily experiences um, in my brain that's constantly trying to retain every detail of everything I receive. Um, so it's impossible to pinpoint exactly where one of those came from. And so this theory suggests that everything we take in, it takes in little bits of everything. And that's why we have these such random ideas is because it's a new experience for us derived from all the experiences that we have. So it's a highly random experiences for us subconscious. So personally, emotional states and the link consciousness theory are valid, but they aim to explain the very imperceptible side of dreaming, which isn't necessarily thorough. Um, whereas the organizational model and the RAT, and to a slightly lesser extent the TST, give thorough evidential explanation for the dreams. And EEG show that the flight or flight function hormones and the limbic system are activated. And this proved to us an REM and the um, random activation theory, which is similar to the organizational and unsatisfactory in unanswering my ideas. So the random activation theory was very unsatisfactory because I wanted to find something more. But not only that, it's unsatisfactory in giving the evidence that we needed to see. It claims that um, the organizational accounts for why images are evoked with neurological, it doesn't give evidence for that. Um, but it rather suggests that our brain is trying to unify the randomness. The dreams are one experience is remembered, but many compiled together. So the TST explains nightmares, but skips the vital parts of my research, which is positive dreams. Um, the organizational model um, my dream suggests that my dream was a byproduct of my brain sorting through that day's information. And REM and the dreaming process make it possible for our brains to do that. So why do we dream? To retain important information long term. Again, REM initiates brain function, not the other way around. And that function is responsible for our memories and how we can experience a past moment without being there. REM brings the limbic system activation and makes it possible to include that dreams are the link between past memories and present experiences. It's necessary to acknowledge that despite research, dreaming is still a relatively unknown and new research field, so it's very open for interpretation. Um, dreams are very theoretical, th theoretical, and we can look at brain and what each part does, but the closest we can come to an answer for why is an educated guess. Science is a very tangible subject, and we don't often think about how much happens behind the scenes, but neurological chemistry and makeup is vital to our daily lives and dreaming in REM is one part that's just as vital. Um, next time you wake up having had a bizarre dream, think about how much dr that dream can mean for you neurologically and the benefits of those neurons firing. Thank you, Bryn. All right, we're gonna go ahead and open it up to questions from our panel and also from our audience. So audience members, if you guys have questions for Bryn about her research, feel free to raise your hand and she will call on you. Yes, Izzy. Um, so you talked a lot about how like our dreams are based off of future experiences that we have, or no, past experiences <laughs> that we've had, um, but did you ever look into research about like how our dreams are based off of our future? Because I know that I've like been anticipating events in my future and then like have dreams about those events and like the turnouts of them. And, so did you, you know, like I did look into a little bit of research on that, and there's not much, I think, yeah, like deja vu, there's been a few studies done on like the relationship between deja vu and dreaming, mm -hmm. and I think most of what they found is that like our unconsciousness is able to like retain a lot more information than our consciousness is, so maybe like we've had these experiences before and we remember them, mm -hmm. and then going back. Or um, the other theory on that is that um, deja vu is, um, so there's a link between 
the part of our brain that takes in the experience we're having right now and the part of our brain that has these experiences before that has had them. And the theory is that deja vu is um, like a misconnection between those two. So it's not actually that we're seeing the future, it's that we're thinking we are. <laughs> Yes. Bern, what did you expect to find when you started this research, and how is what you actually found different from what you initially expected to find? You know, I think this was a good topic for me because I didn't really know anything about it, so I didn't really have any, like, <coughs> ideas going into this. And I would say when I started to do my research, um, the first thing I read was on, like, this negative dreams, and I expected to find... Uh, it, there wasn't really any like biological evidence to the first study that I read, so I expected to seem that like dreams were this more like you know floofy like nebulous <laughs> idea. <laughs> um, I didn't honestly expect to find that much information. I was a little worried in the beginning of this that these ideas wouldn't be able to be backed up with evidence. But as I continued to, I guess I was shocked by like how much of this is shown in the brain scans. Yes. Um, so you talked about how like. We dream about these past experiences and then they help us like prepare for what we're gonna do in the future to handle those situations. Mm -hmm. So like what how do they help how do they help us prepare for like what we're gonna do in the future? Like is it the way that we visualize the dreams that we like have a better comprehension on? Like yeah, so we have um, the part of our brain responsible for the flight or spike responses, like activates hormones and mm -hmm. within our body and so dreaming like we get to practice like what to do like if we're like we get to practice like, okay if, based on how threatening this is should i fight it or should i run okay so it's like a very basic yeah sort of level like yeah. this or this not like this i will say this in this uh, situation <coughs> did you run into any connection between people associating specific things in your dream like your zip lining mm -hmm. and like what that might actually mean did you come across that in your research? Um, originally I was going to look a lot more, I think what you're talking about is dream interpretation, right, yeah. and I was going to look a lot more into that, but the problems there is that that's one aspect of dreaming that doesn't really have any evidence behind it. Mm -hmm. It's just like, maybe it means this, maybe it means this, who knows? So I couldn't really find any substantial things on that, unfortunately. Yes. When did science like, start researching like, brain, like brain and dreams? Well, the first recorded dream dates back to like 25,000 BC. Um, with the Sumerian king who first started looking at dreams as like a spiritual thing and then it was very vital in the Christian religion and the Egyptian religion but I would say Sigmund Freud was in I think the 1930s um, and he was the first scientist to really look at this. Yes. And after this research has your approach to your own dreams changed at all or uh, do they have more significance for you? Or? Um, I think it's cool to think about like how much is going on in my brain when I'm sleeping. I don't really think about that. Um, but other than that, I think not so much. Any other questions? Yes. All right. Thank you, Brent.